What's going on guys? It's your man with the plan, Chain Man 20. We're driving to work. Uh, just wanted to update you guys on some things that were going on and uh, let you know one of my latest purchases, not just for this truck, but just for anything automotive within my family in general. pretty quiet here lately I've only been uploading maybe once a week if that um, biggest problem with like my latest video that I did which if anybody hasn't seen that that's from streetcar takeover Indy from last weekend definitely should go check it out I will leave a link up here as well as one down there and uh, you guys can check it out trust me it's awesome as for as long of a video as it is it's worth watching I promise you but anyways moving on um, I've just been kind of, there's a lot of stuff that's been going on with personal life, and anybody that knows that is that personal life gets really busy really quick, so uh, trying to do a lot of <laughs> dealing with my stuff at work and trying to focus on doing this, uh, it's, it's definitely a challenge, and as far as like a financial thing for trying to do more upgrades for this truck, I'm kind of at a, uh, a bit of a standstill right now. So a little bit of personal and financial things going on, just trying to get all that worked out before we go, you know, head first into this and, um, you know, maybe working on some other projects uh, in the long run as well. I don't want this to be just the only main focus, you know, this is an automotive YouTube channel. So I want it to be primarily about everything automotive. Although at the same time, you know, I have this truck that I daily drive and I'm just trying to do some things to kind of make it better. And uh, you know how that is. It's, everybody wants to mod their vehicles, do tasteful things to make it look good. But I guess the bigger thing is with uh, the biggest compromise with like this truck is because it's a four by four, you know, I would love to do things like, you know, maybe put bigger wheels on it, which I may do anyways. Um, but also, uh, you know, I like, I love how the truck, these particular trucks, the Gen 5, everybody calls them Gen 5s, the Gen 5 trucks look when they're lowered, especially when you put a, what they call a 2-4 drop on it, and what that is is basically 2 inches in the front, 4 inches in the rear, and there's different ways of doing that, one of which is what they call the axle flip deal, and that's where you basically take the stock leaf springs and the axle and you just flip it over on on the top of the leaf springs as opposed to being on the bottom of them. So, uh, and that actually drops the rear end about four inches. It's basically a lowering leveling kit, if that makes any sense at all whatsoever. But I really like how these trucks look with that, but the biggest problem with that is, is if I decide to do that and, you know, just kind of thinking out of realistic perspective here, if I decide I want to go take this somewhere where it might be a bit off-roady, you know, am I going to have ground clearance issues and am I going to bottom out? You know, am I going to have issues like that? So that's what really kind of stops me from wanting to do a lowering kit. But at the same time, like I would love to level this truck out, especially the front end and get it up a little bit higher and maybe put some bigger knobbier tires on it. But at the same time, I don't want to compromise uh, road noise and, you know, having that much more strain on the, the powertrain even though I know it can handle it and I know it would do just fine uh, it's just one of those things where do I really want to take the effort in doing that and and it's just it's 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 one of those car guy things we're always really indecisive about what we want to do with our vehicles so uh, it's one of those things where we have to think it out and what are the pros what are the cons what's the pros of doing this what's the pros of doing that what are the cons of doing this what are the cons of doing that you know, it's it's really just sort of a giant challenge of what do I really want to do with this? And that's kind of where I'm starting to get the thought process of, should I even look into another truck like this? Should I even remotely look into something like that? You know, is that a considerable thing to do? But yeah, that's just kind of what I'm going into. I, I think I've finally decided some of the upgrades that I really do want to do. So 
we'll just kind of talk through that and um, yeah. So some of the upgrades that I know I'm going to do already, I've already decided I'm getting a cold air intake for this, uh, which everybody has suggested a lot of different things. I've heard s &B, Air Raid, um, everybody usually says K&N. But um, I guess my biggest thing is more so, it's not really that I don't have the budget for anything in particular. And I said, I, I mean, it's one of those deals where I'm not like, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money, but at the same time, I want to know that I'm getting the best value for the money. And that's where a lot of people, you know, it's just, I was like, is it worth buying like something like a K-Tech or something? I don't know. I can't remember if K-Tech even makes one for these Silverados, but you know, even GM makes one for this truck. Is it worth it? Is it worth looking into a lot of these others and, and am I sacrificing any sort of power? I guess that's a really big question. I, of course, you're not going to see any of those gains unless you get a tune on it, which Speaking of tunes, I am planning on getting a Diablo uh, Trinity T1000 for this truck. So uh, that way I can uh, do a little bit more with this truck. And, and if I do decide to get something else, uh, whether it's another truck like this or a car of some flavor that has computer in it and, and all that good stuff, uh, I, I will be able to do a lot more with the vehicle and kind of be able to change some characteristics of this. I'm not going too in depth, but I know one thing that I do want to change is sort of lean this truck out because if I'm not mistaken from the factory, these trucks run an air fuel ratio of like 11.7. It's absolutely absurd. I understand not having any detonation issues. You don't want to have detonation issues, especially with a direct injected vehicle when you or you're running uh, a higher compression ratio on it but holy crap like I there's not gonna be any problems I swear <laughs> so uh, I mean I guess from out of the box you could probably almost run a boosted application and not have any lean issues <laughs> whatsoever maybe I'm wrong but you know it's just it's just a silly thought to think about it really is but aside from all that some of the other things that I've been thinking about doing is, you know, definitely getting the cold air intake, getting the uh, the tuner. Uh, some of the other cheaper mods to get for this truck that are bolt-on uh, is working on getting the L86 intake manifold as well as the L86 slash LT1 throttle body, which gives you more intake volume and the throttle body is bigger and more responsive, so I've heard. And anybody that has driven these 5.3s the throttle has always felt really heavy. And, and the funny part about it is, uh, for those that don't know, my dad owns a 2013 Silverado, and it's a night and day difference when you sit in both vehicles and try to drive them. I know one thing my dad always says is he's, he, when he gets in this truck is that he always feels like he has to mash the gas down just for it to go, whereas you get in his truck and you all you do is like touch the pedal and you're already peeling out at, at, and going 40 miles an hour. And so it's like, wow, why, why is this the case? So not to say that the heavy pedal feel on these trucks is necessarily a bad thing. It, it probably helps a lot for some people that do have a lead foot, keep it out of the gas a little bit more. But it's also kind of one of those weird things where it, it's taking away some of that driving confidence that you would normally have with a vehicle this heavy. Granted, these vehicles are kind of heavy, but it's not that heavy. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, I, I guess that's one thing I want to do. And there's so there's those changes that I would like to make. They're relatively cheap to do. Um, as far as you know, getting stuff from GM. I said they're just basic GM parts, and you get. Uh, of course, I'll do the gasket replacement on it, and uh, you'll get a throttle body O-ring as well to get with that. So. I think in total it's like everything said and done like 300 plus dollars which is actually like pretty reasonable uh, to do and I mean even then you don't necessarily have to go all out and get a different uh, air box or anything like that you don't even have to get a, a go and get a cold air intake you can just simply get those mods bolted on and, and as from my understanding it's a plug and play deal so there you go so there's those uh, ideas. So, uh, so far we're talking about cold air intake, we're talking about a tuner, uh, L86 
uh, throttle body and intake manifold. So there's four. The next thing from that is gonna be working on the exhaust side, which I, I am gonna get headers. It's just a big decision of which ones do I wanna go with. Um, I've started adding Cook's long tubes to the picture. Of course, there is American racing headers. They do make great headers, don't get me wrong. So uh, there's also those. There's also uh, Stainless Works, which they make a great set of headers that I, I honestly like and I wish I could have. But uh, again, you know, they have a lot of costs in that. And granted, I know they are all made in, in how, you know, in, in the United States, in, in Ohio and stuff like that. And that, that's fantastic. That's a lot of money for a set of headers. So I guess it's really, do you want to do that? And at the same time, I don't even think they make their headers coded. At least with Cooks, you have the option to go either or. And my understanding from it is unless you're doing like some sort of race application, you don't necessarily need to have ceramic coating. But, you know, if you're gonna spend the money for a set of headers and you're gonna go all out with this kind of thing, why not just get them ceramic coated? It's not like it's gonna cost you that much more. You know, granted it might be another two or three hundred dollars on top of what you're already paying for. You're taking that much more heat out of the engine bay and if you decide to take your current truck and go past whatever it is you're doing, you decide you wanna go and do a boosted application or go with twin turbos and start racing, it's probably not a bad idea to look into something like that. Now granted, the twin turbo setup is gonna be using different manifolds and, and, and even then, so, you know, that's, that's a whole different ball game. So I guess if you're gonna do like a root style blower, even centrifugal, like a pro charger or something like that, then maybe looking into ceramic coated is a much better option but even for me I, I still think that much less heat in the engine bay is and getting carried back out that way is a much better option but along with the cook's headers you get their uh, cook's y pipe so uh, you can either go off-road or you can go with their uh, green high flow catted um, y pipe which i really would like to do a custom y pipe with them if if i can get to that point it's either that or take it to a shop and have them do it and so it's it's really kind of one of those things where how do I want to go about it how do I want to try and make that work so um, I guess the start the starting point will be to look into the headers and then maybe talk to cooks or find a shop in Indy that may be able to work something out where we can have a custom-made Y pipe and an, there's a certain reason why I want that custom Y pipe and uh, if the, uh, the shit-eating grin doesn't say anything about why I want a particular custom Y-pipe, that's because I saw a truck with a custom Y-pipe from Cooks that had a, uh, well, let's just say they dumped it. If anybody knows what that means, you'll know exactly what I'm saying, but if you don't, basically they put a set of cutouts in it, and it's awesome, it sounds good, and um, it's just a thought, you know, if I ever decide I want to take this racing or maybe do some off-roading stuff, putting a set of cutouts in this truck would not necessarily be a bad idea right off the cats, you know, right before them. It would be basically after the first set of O2 sensors, but you would have it back far enough that um, it would dump right before the cats, so that way you have absolutely no exhaust restrictions, and um, it gets pretty loud. So those are some of the things that I've been thinking about for the truck, as far as more upgrades are concerned, which uh, I don't really know a timeline on when that's all gonna happen. I said, hopefully I can get the cold air intake and the tuner. I probably will get both at the same time, and uh, we'll do an install of the cold air intake and as well as doing an install of the Trinity T1000. But I said, I, like I said, I don't really know when that timeline's gonna happen. It could be tomorrow, it could be uh, two or three, four or five months from now. So, but my biggest thing is trying to do it before the winter hits, so that way it's already said and done and maybe I can work a little bit better on my fuel economy. But anyways, with all that said, those are some of the things that I'm looking at for this truck that I'm going to do regardless. Uh, some of the other mods, maybe looking into, I mean, I've been doing my research on it already, but I have been looking into maybe doing an active fuel management delete for this truck. And 
it, it's basically just going to come down to a couple of things, mostly just research on uh, getting the tuner and just shutting off active fuel management and driving the truck for a week or two and just seeing what happens. You know, is is am I going to have uh, worse or better fuel economy? You know, how's it how's it going to work out? Um, those are some of the things I'm considering, and and then even then, if I decide that's what I'll do, then I may look into you know having a shop do that because that may be a little bit out of my range because I'll have to have a custom cam made for it and uh, all that good stuff. So, anyways, with all that said, that's what I'm looking at for the truck. That's everything in total. So, just a quick recap: cold air intake, tuner, uh, L86 intake, manifold, and throttle body four things uh, headers custom Y pipe and possible active fuel management delete with a custom cam those are some of the things that I'm looking at for this truck so there's seven things right there now at the beginning of this video I told you guys that I had bought something not just specifically for this truck but for just automotive in general for all the cars uh, my my truck my dad's truck um, anything else we want to clean which that should basically tell you what I just got. If, if cleaning has anything to tell you on that, just that word alone should tell you what I got. So, because I threw out that spoiler, I'm just gonna go on ahead and tell you anyways. I decided to spend the money and go on ahead and get some products from Adams Polishes. Now, the reason why I went with Adams Polishes basically it just came down to doing a lot of research now before I say anything and go in in any further detail just to let you guys know you don't have to go and get a particular you know you don't have to go and buy the best things the only reason I spent the money for it is because I wanted to try it and the biggest reason why is because I wanted to try using like uh, things like which one of the things I bought was a foam cannon I we recently bought a pressure washer and I wanted to try and do a foam cannon on this truck and uh, do things like a two bucket wash which it may not be necessary for a daily driver and do just a little bit more in-depth things with this truck to try and help keep it a little bit cleaner than what I normally do and it saves me that much more money to have to go up and get it ran through the car wash and things like that you know with a family trip coming up, I wanted to try and get it highly detailed before we left. And uh, you know, it just makes much more sense to do that, have it nicely detailed before we leave. And so that's sort of the reason why I bought it and it's sort of a one expense, uh, done deal kind of thing. If I buy these things now, then I don't have to buy it for a while. If anything, I just buy some things to reload on, like so, uh, detail spray, things like that. Just, just to kind of reload on those things and uh, those were some of the things I went on ahead and got anyways. So what I did get was I, obviously I got a foam cannon, I got the uh, two bucket wash system, and I also got uh, a tire and wheel cleaning kit because this truck tends to dirty up the wheels pretty good, especially the front wheels. And even on the insides of the wheels, they're getting pretty cruddy. So it's about time that I do something about that to try and keep the wheels nice. Uh, at least I know why that wouldn't you know you would think that that's not necessarily a big thing to worry about but that's a nitpicky thing for me I do like a clean vehicle and I like how glossy the paint can be especially with this truck I've taken very well care of it and, and most people would think something like this the paint would probably be ruined and stuff like that granted it does have uh, tiny dings and scratches here and there it's a truck but I, I'm a nitpicky kind of guy and I like to keep things clean and like right now it just really needs a bad detail I know you can't tell but it, it just it needs it really bad so those are what some of the things that I got for this truck and as well as my dad's because he's uh, he's a bit of a nitpicky guy like me he likes to detail his truck as well and I know that's one of the things we'll do right before we leave is at least detail my truck and, and since he's not taking his uh, we're just gonna do some big cleanup around the truck interior and then detail the entire outside of this truck make sure it looks good before we go down and I will probably take like a bottle of detail spray with me down down there and probably waterless uh, wash system maybe get into that maybe buy a couple bottles before I leave so that way I at least have it and it's not an issue when we leave 
So with all that said, guys, that's basically everything that I've, I've wrapped up. I went on ahead and decided to, to spend the money and go on ahead and get some Adams polishes. Like I said, though, you don't necessarily have to buy Adams polish. It was sort of a, a, a battle between which to, which one did I really want more? Did I really want chemical guys or did I want Adams polish? And, and even then, you don't necessarily have to go to that extent of buying either or you can go a cheaper route and you can even go with Meguiar's or anything like that there's there's nothing wrong with any of those particular brands and they've worked great for for years and and people you know still stay true to those roots and use those polishes and, and waxes and, and cleaning systems and they all work great but I, I decided I wanted to, to step out and try something different. And that's kind of what the, the whole car community and the whole this this whole thing is just about. You know, you gotta try some things and see how well they work. Because if you don't get out there and at least try it, you'll never know whether it works right or whether it works good or not. And the worst case is, is I don't like it and I will uh, use what I have of it and or maybe give it to a friend of mine that would like to use it and that'll be the end of it. So that's where I think I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And also to the new subscribers, what's up guys? And for those of you that are stopping in for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget about that notification bell next to the subscribe button. Make sure to hit that so you are always notified of when I post new videos because nobody likes being left out in the dark. I don't like it. So with all that said, guys, Hopefully you have a fantastic day. Take care and have a great day.